Hello, I'm Holly and welcome to a slightly late October wrap up. So in October I had a decent reading month. I ended up reading seven books which worked out at 2,957 pages or an average of 95 pages per day. And as with every month I'm going to start with my stats. So this month I thought I would make some pie charts. Tell me if you like them. So first of all we have star ratings and in October I had one book that was a DNF so it's not in the graph, one book that was a two star, four four stars, one 4.5 and one five star. In genre I read three fantasies, three thrillers and then one short story collection which was predominantly fantasy and sci-fi stories. I also read three young adult books and four adult. In format I read four physical books, two ebooks and one audiobook. And then where I sourced these books, two were from my own TBR that predated 2020, four were books that I had hauled in 2020 and then one was from Scribd because that is how I listen to audiobooks. So without further ado let's just dive straight in to the first book that I finished in October. So the first two books that I finished in October were actually for my Dark Academia vlog. I made a vlog reading five Dark Academia books to see if I really liked that genre and the results were interesting. If you haven't seen that vlog I would definitely recommend checking it out. I will leave a link in the description if you haven't seen it yet. And the first one was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a young adult thriller following this girl called Stevie who gets accepted to this prestigious school and the students at this school are able to pursue their passions. So for example Stevie wants to be a detective, she wants to solve murders and because of this she takes classes such as anatomy and physiology and one-to-one -one lessons about detective work and I know that a lot of people love this book, love this series but I ended up rating it two stars. For me it just wasn't that thrilling and I just wasn't captivated by this story. So in this novel you're following two mystery plot lines. You're going back in time to I believe it's the 1930s when this school was founded and the wife and daughter of the man who created it ended up getting kidnapped, they went missing and there's kind of a mystery in that it was never really solved and then there is also a murder mystery plot in Stevie's present day timeline. And to be honest, neither of those mystery stories really captivated me at all. I was just bored. I don't have too much to say. I'm very sad that I didn't love this as much as everyone else seemed to. I think I might continue with the second book and then if I'm not a fan of the second book just give up on the series. Let me know what you think about this series. I know that a lot of people love it but I'd love to know if you think the second book is better than the first one, anything like that. And then also for that vlog I read Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is an adult novel and I feel like it's quite difficult to categorise. I categorised it as a thriller but this is a very strange book. So it's following this main character who attends this prestigious school. This school, Catherine House, is very strange. When you decide to go to Catherine House you have to give up connection with the world for three years while you're there. You can't really contact your family, your friends, and this means that you're very isolated in Catherine House. And our main character at the beginning of the novel, she feels very apathetic and she doesn't really care about what's going on, but there are definitely these strange cult aspects. And something that I think a lot of people probably didn't enjoy about this book, I know that it has had mixed reviews, but something that I enjoyed is the writing style. It's very much written as fragments and as snapshots into our main character's life during Catherine House and I don't know if there is like a whole plot, it's more just the experiences that our main character goes through and this creepy atmosphere that permeates the novel and I really did enjoy the atmosphere of this book. I ended up rating this one four stars so I did end up really enjoying this one and I think the real selling point for this book is the atmosphere. As I said it was very atmospheric and there is this ominous feeling throughout even though it doesn't have outright horror aspects such as gore it is horrific and there is this tension throughout the novel that I really really enjoyed and I've written in my notes because I take notes that it was almost sickening this tension but in a good way 
and I don't know if you're going to enjoy it because I do know that some people just really don't click with this book but if it sounds like something you might enjoy I would definitely recommend giving it a go. Then the next book that I finished in October was my most anticipated book of the year and that was The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. There is a lot of buzz surrounding this novel at the moment. I'm sure that you have heard of it because everyone seems to be reading it right now but this follows this young woman called Adi LaRue who was born in the 18th century? Is that right? The 1700s or the end of the 1600s? And she is very unhappy with the place that society has put her in. She's being forced into this marriage that she really doesn't want to be part of and on the day of her wedding she actually runs away and ends up making this deal with this shadowy figure. This shadowy figure ends up giving her immortality but in return for this she is forgotten by everyone who meets her. They will meet her and talk to her and the moment that they turn away they will forget that she ever existed and this means that our main character Adi LaRue has lived a very lonely existence and you're following her for 300 years and then in the present timeline so there is like a dual narrative in this book but in the present timeline she meets this bookseller called Henry and he remembers her he's the first person who has remembered her in 300 years and obviously a series of events occurs now I did give this one four stars I didn't give it five stars but something that was absolutely stunning in this book was the writing I've always loved V Schwab's writing she is one of my favorite authors of all time but the writing in this was so poetic so lyrical and it really was a joy to just read these words it's heartbreaking it's sad there is definitely this sadness that is just present throughout the entire novel and I loved spending time with our characters. I loved Addy as a main character. I loved Luke which is the name that Addy gives to the shadowy figure that she made this deal with. He pops up quite a lot throughout this book and they have a very interesting relationship because she is not really enjoying her life but she is determined never to give up her soul to this god or whatever. She's just so stubborn and I love the dynamic between those two characters. There is also mental health representation in this and there are discussions of suicide and stuff like that so do be aware. I will always leave the content warnings in my description box if you need them. But overall I thought this was a beautiful novel. It was very slow and I think some people might not enjoy that but I think the reason I didn't give it five stars is just because the ending didn't impact me as much as it seemed to impact other people. I did love the ending, I think it was very satisfying but I just wasn't sobbing my heart out and because of that it only got a four star but I would definitely recommend this book. If you love V. Schwab, if you don't love V. Schwab, I think this one is quite different from her previous books, but it also does have the nuggets that I love from V. Schwab, like the characters, and yeah, I would definitely recommend picking this book up. Now, the next book was actually a DNF. If you don't know what DNF means, it means that I didn't finish it. It said did not finish. And I was so upset about this because I really do not DNF books. Usually I will persevere. And what makes it even worse is that this book was sent to me for review and that was Terra Nova by MTG. So I got about 35% through this. I got a good chunk but I just really didn't enjoy this book. Firstly, I don't think the writing was great. I think this is a debut novel so obviously this author doesn't have as much experience but I think the interactions between all the different characters seemed very forced and strange and just not realistic. I hated the characters and the plot for me was just so boring. I don't DNF like I say but it was so bad and so boring. I was so uninterested in this book that I got about maybe like 150 maybe 200 pages and I was just like I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna force myself to read a book. I'm not enjoying. I'm very sad because obviously I really do appreciate that the author sent this book to me and I'm sure that there is a market for this. I didn't even tell you what this book is about. So this follows this girl called Evangeline who has this rare blood condition and she ends up going through this portal into 
this world that is ruled by vampires. So that premise to me sounded incredible and I definitely think there is a market for this. I had a look at some of the other reviews on Amazon for example and some people were giving it four and five stars so it definitely could be a book for you and I wouldn't want my review to take away from this book. Then I read another book by V.E. Schwab and that was Our Dark Duet. So this is the second and final book in the Monsters of Verity duology which is a young adult duology set in this city called Verity that is divided into two. One side is ruled by monsters, one side is ruled by men and you're following two characters, one from each side, one is a monster who wants to be human and one is a human who wants to live up to her monstrous father. I gave the first book in this series four stars and I also gave this one four stars so I really did enjoy this series. It wasn't five stars for me but four stars is still a brilliant rating. Like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, something that is fantastic about this is the characters. I loved our two main characters, August especially, and then you also have Kate and the interactions between those two I really loved. I also really loved the world in this. So there are different types of monsters. You have Corsi, which in my head are kind of animalistic monsters who eat dead bodies. Then you have the Malkai, which are vampires, and you also have Sunai, which I won't go too much into because I don't want to spoil it, and I really loved the Sunai monsters. They're very unique and very intriguing. And I'll try not to spoil too much, but something to do with the Sunai is very closely linked to music. And I don't actually play a musical instrument. I'd love to learn at some point, but I do really love music in books. I've seen in quite a lot of books that I've rated very highly that there is this musical element. For example, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. There's also a book, I think, is it up here? A Thousand Perfect Notes by C.G. Drews. I really love that book and I'm sure that has music, I'm sure. Violin? Piano? Something like that. But I love music in books. I don't know what it is about it because obviously you're not actually hearing the music, but I just, I really love the musical element in this. There was great writing as always, a fast and action-packed plot. And again, I definitely recommend this. If you haven't tried V. Schwab, I feel like you might enjoy this one because I think it has a lot of widespread appeal. It has that dark, morally gray atmosphere that a lot of V. Schwab's books tend to have, but I think this one is very accessible. Obviously it's young adult. And yeah, I would definitely recommend giving this series a try if you haven't yet. And then we have a book that I absolutely loved and that was How Long Until Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. This is a collection of short stories that are fantastical, sci-fi, that kind of thing. And I absolutely adored some of the stories in this. I did end up giving it 4.5 stars because I did actually make a note of the star ratings that I would have given each of the stories and it just worked out that the average was 4.5. But some of the stories in this were just incredible. I don't know how N.K. Jemisin can do it. She is just a wizard. And I'll tell you some of my favourite stories. So I really loved L'Alchemista. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I think it might be Italian or something, but that had a lot of cooking in it. I love that one. We had the Effluent Engine, which was a historical one, and it was very steampunk, very industrial, that kind of thing, and there was a female-female relationship in that, which I adored. We had the City Born Great, which I believe was kind of N.K. Jemisin exploring the concepts that she ended up writing in The City We Became. I I think that's what it's called, the book that has recently come out by her. And I think a few of these stories, you can definitely see that they were the spark of the stories that she's actually expanded into full novels. For example, there was one that is very much reminiscent of her Broken Earth trilogy. Uh, what else did I love? I just love so many. Oh, Cuisine de Memoir. I think that's how you pronounce that. That was another one about cooking and I really do love cooking. So it really, all my interests kind of collided in this book. Some of these stories made me so emotional, which I think is incredible considering they aren't long. These are short stories. Some of them are a matter of pages. Some of them are maybe 30 pages. But the way that N.K. Jemisin made me fully get invested in these stories, it's just incredible. And if you are a little put off by short stories, I don't know if I love short stories, I haven't read enough collections, but 
if you are a little bit hesitant towards short stories I definitely recommend this one because I think these were top quality and I think that she is quickly becoming one of my favourite authors of all time. I just want to read all of her books, every one so far I think I've rated either four or five stars and you should definitely pick up this book. Then the second to last book that I read in October was The Lie Tree by Frances Harding. This is a young adult historical novel that follows this girl who is very much trying to break out of the position that society has put her in. It's very much a commentary on women's agency and power in the Victorian times. I think it's Victorian, that kind of era. And it's also a murder mystery plot. And something very intriguing is this lie tree, which is this tree, obviously, that her father has. And she finds out that if you eat the fruit of this tree, it will tell you a truth. And the way to encourage it to grow fruit is to tell it lies. And again, I actually really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. Like Catherine House, it was very atmospheric. I really was loving those atmospheric, a little bit spooky, reads that I read in October and this definitely had the atmosphere. It's set on this island, it feels very foggy and dark and obviously there's murder in this. She's trying to work stuff out and uncover all these secrets and I definitely want to read more from this author. And then the final book that I read in October, I've left the best till last and that was The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. I rated this one five stars. As I said before, I'm just loving N.K. Jemisin at the moment she can't do anything wrong in my head and this book this is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy, the first one being the fifth season. And this is set in this world that is plagued by these fifth seasons, these apocalyptic events. Think tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, that kind of thing. And there are a number of perspectives in the first book, but the first one you're introduced to is this woman who returns home to find that her husband has killed her son and kidnapped her daughter. And a fifth season has just occurred, so our main character is trying to track her husband down, get revenge and while this is going on the world is just ending in the background and the magic system in this is so unique and complex. I think you do need to take a little bit of time when you're reading these books to fully understand everything that is going on and you do really need to focus but that didn't take away from my enjoyment. I loved how intricate this magic system is so it's very much about earth powers. People who can cause earthquakes and stop earthquakes and there is a lot more in this book. The world just opens up so much and I really, I just loved it so, so much. So one of our protagonists, Essen, from the first book, she is also an older protagonist. She is middle-aged, she's had children, and I really enjoyed that. I feel like a lot of the books that I read tend to have these younger protagonists, either teenagers or young adults, and I really love following Essen because she's had all these experiences in her past that has really built her character. It's so three-dimensional and faceted and I love that about a character that they have all this baggage from the past that influences all their decisions that they make in the time that you're reading about them and this story it's brilliant it really is brilliant and if you haven't started this series what are you doing you need to start this series you need to read the fifth season it really is incredible and there isn't too much more i can say except that i loved every second i loved the writing which i don't think everyone would love because it is quite different a lot of it is written in second person for example you did this you did that and i think it can take a while to acclimatize to that if you're unfamiliar with that, if you've never read a book in that style before. But I love the writing style. It just, when you know who the narrator is, I can't, I can't talk about it. I love it. I just, I loved every single thing about this book and yeah, one of the best books that I've read this year and I cannot wait to get to the third book soon. And that was it. That was my wrap up. I hope that you have enjoyed this wrap up. Did you read any five star books in October? Did you read Ali LaRue? I know that a lot of people have been reading that one at the moment. And thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye. Mm -hmm.